The Johnson Wax Program. <laughs> Presenting Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly. Edwin's and his orchestra open the show with Boo Hoo. gives you bright, sparkling music. And Johnson's Glow Coat gives you bright, sparkling floors. Floors that everyone will admire the moment they step into your home. There never was a polish easier to use. It dries so quickly and gives your floors such gleaming beauty. Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat works like magic on dull, drab linoleum. Twenty minutes after you apply Glow Coat, the floor will be shining like you, protected against dirt and wear. Order Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat. The easy-to-use, no-rubbing floor polish made by the makers of Johnson's Wax. Tonight, he's taken over the management of a nightclub and renamed it the Club McGee. Molly has warned him that he'll be just a small noise in a big racket, but he knows better. And here, welcoming patrons at the door, we find, as master and mistress of ceremonies, Fibber McGee and Molly. Welcome, folks. Welcome to the Club McGee. Something doing every minute. Yes, sir. Cloakroom to the right, sir. Come right in, folks. Get a fist full of feverish fun. Let our gaiety gal show you a gorgeous gob of goo to goo. How are you, brother? What? No, sir. No covering or no minimum charge. We charge only the maximum. Quiet, Molly. Oh, hello, Mrs. Worrybottom. Waiter, a good table for Mrs. Worrybottom. Uh, excuse me, please. But uh, do you take care of parking people's car? Absolutely, brother. Our doorman will park it quickly and carefully. Why, there he goes now with your car, see? (laughs) Well, we we do quite a business here. We have to park them a little close together. (laughs) All right, folks, step right in. Heavenly days, McGee. I hope you can handle this business. Just don't worry about that, Molly. I've learned all about nightclubs from the movies. Our lady violinist saw a movie today, too, and can't play tonight. What was the picture? Lost her rosin. Oh, Step right in, folks. Our next floor show is about to go on. Hey, Molly, there's a couple of guys in tuxedos. Have them put right down in front to dress up the place. Why, you think enough? Those are our two waiters. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Welcome to the Club McGee, folks. Everything is... Excuse me, please. Are you the proprietor of the club? Well, you betcha, sis. How do you like it? I got Diego De Lovely to do the decorations. And while I think he went a little cockeyed in a modernistic direction, the effect in general... I don't want to hear about it. Look. Well, what is it? It's an empty glass, McGee. Now, if this is a parlor trick, madam, we haven't done... No, no, now listen. This is what the waiter gave me when I ordered a cocktail. An empty glass. Hmm. What'd you order, sis? A dry martini. Mm. They made it a little too dry. (laughs) Waiter, take care of this lady. All right, folks, welcome to the club, McGee. Step I right can in. see trouble ahead for us, McGee. Huh? I don't think this is the proper business Excuse for you. Excuse me, Boris. Sorry, bud. You can't come in here with that big white hat on. This ain't no fancy dress affair. McGee, that's our chef. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, what is it, Cookie? Listen, you better order a couple of hundred pounds more veal. Veal? What do we use all that veal for? Chicken a la king. Hmm. Can't you use beef? We're using the beef for a chicken pie. <laughs> Say, I saw a couple of chickens out in the kitchen this morning. What are we using them for? Turkey sandwiches. Oh. <laughs> okay, bud, go ahead and order the veal. 
You know, Molly, there's more to this business than meets the eye. Oh, I wish you hadn't gone into this, McGee. I don't think it's strictly honest. Oh, now, Molly, don't be like that. Customers don't mind a little finagling when we give them first-class service and good food. I'm getting kind of hungry myself. Well, why don't you order a sandwich? No, I think I'll get a roll from the drummer. Now, give me a drum roll, Ted. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if your food is a little slow coming, don't worry about it. Our chef has got a knot in his shoestring potato. <laughs> Now, folks, we want you to meet our handsome soloist, Harry Cool. Now, Harry used to work in our kitchen here at the Club McGee, mixing salads, but we discovered he could sing, so we took this ballad soul away from the salad bowl. <laughs> you know, uh, Perry Cole was on a vacation, so tonight, Harry Cool is going to sing My Last Affair. What love and romance have done to me I'm not the same as I used to be This is my last affair And tragedy That seems to be the end of me My happiness is misery This is my last affair Right from the start, you took my love, for my heart apart. Now there's nothing new to look forward to. My dreams won't come true, so I'll make a vow. No more to love shrine will I bow. I cross my heart and I'll seal it now. This is my last affair. the office and check over the account. With pleasure, McGee. All this noise is giving me a headache. Well, what's the nightclub for? A health resort? Come on in and sit down. Oh, I wish you'd never got into this night. McGee, who's that at your desk? Hey, who are you, bud? What's the idea? Take it easy, Patty Waite. Where Shooter Mulligan sent me. Where Shooter Mulligan, the gangster? Oh, well, okay, bud. I was just... Uh, well, uh, can uh, we order you up a sandwich or something? <laughs> we don't want any trouble. Listen. Prayer through to Mulligan thinks you're doing a good business here. Hmm. You better start paying off. Well, paying off for what? Protection. Protection against what, bud? Lots of things, punk. Protection against your place being busted in and your windows broke. And you being beat up, see? And what if we don't pay you, hoodlum? Well, one bomb ought to blow this dump to bits. But you just take it over. We don't want our rushes any. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I knew it. I knew it. What'll we do now, McGee? Quiet, Molly. Let me think. Oh, dear. More trouble. Quiet. Hello? Yes, this is the Club McGee. Trevor McGee speaking. What? You want a what? Say, listen here, brother. You ain't got any business bringing a kid that young to a nightclub. I won't stand for it. What was that? Some guy wanted a reservation for a party of six. (laughs) (laughs) Must think we're running a kindergarten Well, I wish we were. Maybe you could learn something. Come in. Oh, well, what is it, madam? And I'm John alone, and I, I wish to dance. Uh, could you find me a partner? I love the music, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
put Dwayne Dorcas's hot band. Uh, I don't believe we can furnish you with a partner, though. Oh, yes, we can, Molly. Boy, send gigolo number seven over here. Number seven is our best gigolo, man. I'd say he was positively the best. The only one we got. Yeah. <laughs> our other gigolo went on a jagalo and got tossed in the juggalo. <laughs> Oh, hi there, Seven. Hello, number Seven. Seven, this lady wants to do a little cuss. Madam, allow me to present the smoothest gigolo who ever kissed a lady's hand. Yeah, so he could get a good look at her diamond bracelet. Quiet, Molly. How do you do, madam? I am um, Ja. Oh, oh, they tell me you're an excellent dancer. Madam, I am so good. I make bellows and Yolanda what I am today. <laughs> and with you, madam, I am a fantastic partner. Is it not so, yes? Yes, it is not so. McGee. I mean, uh, well, uh, take good care of the lady, Seven. Oh, I'm sure he will. Will you not, number seven? Madame, to me, you will be so precious as my life. Yes, yes. When I hold you in my arm, the whole world is stopped to watch the most graceful dancing. Come, madame. We shall soon know the poetry of motion. You will let you Oh, okay, okay. Don't let her throw you, Seven. <laughs> yeah. To think that a week ago that guy was working in Pep Snoggle's pool. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful what little polish can do. That's what every housewife says who tries Johnson's wax. Harpo. <laughs> Hello, folks. You running this nightclub? You betcha, Harpo. And we already used Johnson's wax on our dance floor, so you needn't get underfoot yourself. Well, listen. When's the floor show starting? Why, Mr. Wilcox? Do you want to see it so bad? No, I heard it was so bad. I don't want to see it. Oh. Well, if you don't like it, Harpo, why don't you go home? No, I think I'll run over to the Stocko Club. They have a swell ventriloquist over there. Oh, yeah. Well, you better hurry. I hear he's looking for a new dummy. <laughs> all right, all right. Heavenly days, I never spent such an evening. Gangsters, complaints, gigolos. Look, here comes the gigolo now. Oh, well, how'd it go, number seven? Oh, madame was the most exquisite dance ever. I have never, no, never danced with a lady oh, who Oh, dance... lay off that phony accent, Pete. Could she dance? Oh, that dray horse. Say, that old fluff couldn't keep time if she had a bass drum tied on her back, and I think she did. <laughs> I think I'll go back to the pool room and ask for me old job back. <laughs> Poor old number seven going back behind the eight ball. A fine business we're in. I'm downright ashamed, I am. What was that? Oh, just one of the bus boys. Come on, McGee. Announce the next number. The show must go on. What? Go on. Okay, okay. Wien, go on. Bunchy with the don't watch out. If he ever bites you, then you sing and shout. You go, he needs to that, he needs to that, he needs to that. That's what love is all about. How does the bug go bite you if you don't watch out? If he ever bites you, then you sing and shout. Drip, be, de, 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 He'll answer round to dee 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 ho ho hey. The love bug go by to if you don't watch out. If he ever bites you, then you sing and shout. You go leap dee 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 Ah, that's what true is all about. You can't eat, you can't sleep, you go crazy. You'll just not be dotty down the day. If someone wants to know why you're crazy, you'll answer rowdy dee 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 oh hey. The wings bug go by you if you don't watch out. Just stop looking, listen to the band swing out. Hey, 
Molly, did you see that gangster guy around anywhere? No, I think he's gone, McGee. Are you scared? Who, me? Oh, I just know. I'm as cool as a cucumber. Oh, Why? McGee, there's Mrs. Wearybottom again. Oh. Are you enjoying yourself, Mrs. Wearybottom? Oh, hi, Weary. Oh, hello, folks. My, this certainly is a real nightclub, isn't it? Air conditioning and everything. My brother just fainted at our table from the smoke. Imagine that, and he's a fireman, too. <laughs> The reason I came in, I just got back from Florida, and I wanted to bleach out a little bit. There was a man at the next table who wanted to know if you had a gambling room here, and I said, no, but if you really wanted to gamble, to order one of your steak sandwiches. Don't look now, but you got your foot in the champagne bucket. Imagine that crack about our steak sandwiches, Molly. Well, our steak sandwiches are pretty bad. Well, maybe so, but we serve two slices of dill pickle with them, don't we? What do they want for 14 bucks? Excuse me, laddie. Are you the proprietor of this place? Yes, sir. What can we do for you, sir? What's on your mind, Scotty? Well, uh, can you know humidify the room? What do you mean, humidify the room? There's no germs in here. Oh, you're thinking of fumigating me. Oh, oh, You mean it's too dry, sir? Uh, I was very dry. I've only been here four hours, and the olive in my cocktail is getting very wrinkled. <laughs> McGee, you get out of this business. Oh, now, Molly, after all the trouble I've been to get it fixed up, getting Diego de Lovely to do the decorating and all, of course, he did go a little heavy on that modern... Excuse me, Mr. McGee, excuse me, please, man. Oh, silly what? Hey, listen, Phil, you're the doorman. You ain't supposed to come button in here like this. Yes, I know, I man. know it's cold out there, but after all, we each have our work cut out Sure, before. we have. You go back and call cabs for people. Sure. Yes, sure. ma'am, but it ain't the cold place. It's oh. not a cab whistle. What's the matter with your cab whistle? Well, listen, please, ma'am. While I was out in front of the club calling cars and cabs and opening doors for folks and stuff, in my brand new uniform. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how do you like your uniform, Phil? I like it fine, Mr. McGee, especially the gold braid. <laughs> Only a too big in the back. Oh. Well, I got it from a rear admiral. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, silly. Yes, ma'am. Well, I was eating peanuts when I tried to blow the whistle for a cab and found out my whistle don't go Woo! no more. <laughs> it quit like this. <laughs> Well, what of it? Don't be so dad right temperamental. <laughs> I ain't temperamental, Miss McGee. But every time I blow, the little whistle sound like a police whistle. Every time I blow for taxi cab, I get a placement wagon. But oh. I'll go back. Okay. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I know the keep calling patrol wagons. We're liable to need one if that tough hoodlum. Hey, what, sister? Oh. Oh, 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 it's uh, Mr. Mulligan's boy again. <laughs> Well, I haven't quite decided about that proposition yet. I pipe down, Patty Way. Uh, quit calling me Panty Way. I ain't no Panty Way, am I, Molly? No, you're not. See? <laughs> what was it you wanted, Mister? The boss wants to see us in your office at two a.m. Is that convenient? No, it ain't. You see, I got... yeah, that's convenient. Don't shoot. Okay, you better be there. Heavenly days, worse and worse. I told you, McGee, this was no business for respectable people. Go on and uh, announce your next feature, and quit trembling. Oh, I ain't trembling. If I am trembling, it's just from rage. If that guy'd have said one more word to me, I'd have... I'd have... I'd have... Go on and announce the next number. Okay, okay. Attention, please, folks. We got a big surprise for you. I know. Clean ashtrays. Hooray! Why? <laughs> folks, we got a great surprise for you. The Club McGee is probably the only nightclub in the world featuring organ music. Ah, organ music. What's so soothing as a nice, dreamy organ solo? So just sit back now and relax, folks, and prepare to meditate. We take pleasure in presenting Mr. Milt Hurst. Go right ahead, Milt. <laughs> Thank you. 
was great. Folks, that was Milt Hurst, the rhythm stylist of the organist, the world's hottest organist. Now you'll know, folks, what the, what they mean by the good hurt. <laughs> well, Molly, I guess you'll admit I ain't such a mug now. That organ stuff went over with a bang, didn't it? It took brains to put on. Excuse me, Mr. McGee. What is it, waiter? We just had a bit of a rumpus in the check room. Dad, rather, what's the matter? It was a customer, sir. The check room girl made him take his coat. He said he didn't have a coat. But she insisted he had a coat and made him take one. Well, she done exactly right. Even if he didn't have one, he should have shut up and took it anyway and glad to get it. Yes, sir, that's what he did. Well, what are you coming to me about it for? Well, begging your pardon, sir. It was your coat. My... <laughs> oh, hello there, bud. What's on your mind? Hello there, my boy. Just wanted to ask you to okay this dinner check for me while I run over to the hotel and get my wallet. Careless of me coming here without my wallet. Careless of me just coming here. Well, uh... Now, uh, I don't know, Mr... Uh... Boomer, my boy. Horatio K. Boomer. Well, how big is the check, Mr. Boomer? Only $472, my dear. Piping so. 472 Phew. Let's see that bill. What's this last charge on your bill? That $84 item. Oh, that. Let's yeah. see. What was that? Oh, yes. A short beer. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> So, uh, you want me to hold this bill for you, eh, Mr. Boomer? It isn't too much to ask, my boy. Yes. Just while I run over to my hotel and get some money. Well, I guess I can do that, all right. Be glad to give you an I.O.U., of course. Hey, here, I'll write it out now. Let me mm-hmm. see now. Pencil, pencil, pencil. Here. Oh, thank you, my dear. Now, where can I write? Paper, paper, paper. Here. Uh, thank you. Uh, I.O.U., $472 plus interest and 8%. 8% for the time it takes you to go to your hotel? Yes, my dear. Horatio K. Boomer is always meticulous in financial matters. Here, my boy. Sign here. Oh, okay. Silver McGee. There you are. Thanks, Boomer. I'll hold this till you get back. Uh, which hotel are you stopping at? I'm at the Book Cadillac. Why, that's in Detroit. Why, so it is. So it is. I'm afraid it's going to take me a little longer than I thought. A uh, boy, have the cab start a call me a train. Well. <laughs> You got his I.O.U. You bet he got his, uh, got his I.O.U. <laughs> you got to give me credit for getting my signature on it, too. Yeah, well, if it... Oh, McGee. Huh? It's 2 o'clock. Well, what of it? We keep open till the last cut. No, don't you remember Square Shooter Mulligan? You got to be in your office at 2 o'clock. Hey, that's right. Well, come on, let's go. I'm going to tell these mugs just what I think of them. Head waiter, if anybody wants me, I'll be busy in my office for some time. After you, Molly. All right, you two. Yeah, keep your hands where we can see them. Mm-hmm. These are the two I was telling you about, Square Shooter. Hope. Meet up with Square Shooter Mulligan. How do you do, I'm sure. Hi, Square. I'm, I'm glad. Hey, Silly Watson, what you doing in here? I got persuaded Miss McGee with a blackjack. <laughs> Didn't want him outside to call no cops, see? Tell him, Square Shooter. Okay, little slip. Listen, folks. Me and the boys just muscle him in, see? Mm. We're cutting ourselves a slice of the Club McGee. We're going to put in some roulette and some nice slot machines. We don't want no trouble with nobody. They operate smooth, understand? Well, shucks, bud. I, uh... Say, why do they call you square shooter? Because I am a square shooter, see? Want to make something of it? No, sir, he don't. Quiet, silly. <laughs> well, uh... Well, listen here, sharpshooter. Or square shooter. Uh, I always heard you as a square shooter. I mean... Well, look, we, we put a lot of dough into this place to lose it overnight. Money for kitchen equipment. Licenses. Decoration. I got Diego de Lovely to do the decoration, you know. Well, I think he went a little flossy on that modernistic stuff. The general... Get effect. to the point, Patty Wade. And quit calling me... Well, okay, put down the gun. <laughs> I was going to suggest, Square Shooter, that you give us a break. Give us a square gamble on the proposition. Let's draw cards for the club or something. Winner take all. How about it? Well, no, why not? Well, nobody never said square shooter didn't give a guy a break. Look, let's take a deck of cards, eh? Yeah? You draw the seven of diamonds, uh-huh. you keep the place, and we don't bother you no more. Hmm. And the other card, we take it over. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that? That's very fair, bud. Uh, get the cards, Molly. Where? That's better. Haven't you got any cards? You got any cards, Phil? Uh, yes, I ain't. Ah, for that one. Well, how about dice? Got any dice, boy? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, you is, Mr. Square Shooter. Him here. Listen, McGee. Huh? You roll the dice once. You roll a seven and you keep the place. See? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you move out. Is that fair? Oh, okay. I never was much of a dice shooter, boys, but never let it be said I wasn't a sport. Don't talk so much, Patty Way. Shoot. Quit calling me, Pat. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. Here goes. 
Oh, I'm afraid to look. Heaven. <gasps> Hot dog. Oh. Beginner's luck. Peter Ward, now pump him full of lead. Oh. Yeah. Well, so the mulligan always keeps his word. <laughs> the joint is yours, folks. If anybody bothers you, come to Mulligan. <laughs> come on, loose lips. Let's crack. Well, thanks, Mulligan. <laughs> so long, panty waist. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess I got out of that one all right, didn't I, Phil? <laughs> yes, I reckon so. <laughs> Heavenly days, what a night. <laughs> that sure was a close one, all right, wasn't it? <laughs> my, my, I was scared for a minute, though. Yeah. Those guns were loaded. Yes, ma'am. So was them dice. <laughs> I wish I could show you just how easy it is to apply Johnson's self-polishing glow coat to your floors and linoleum. Even a child can follow these simple directions. First, pour a little glow coat right out of the can onto the clean floor. Second, take a cloth or the long-handled glow coat applier and spread the liquid lightly over the floor surface. Then go away and let it dry for 20 minutes. Come back and find your floors gleaming like new. No more tired backs from scrubbing linoleum. No more embarrassment because of dingy, soiled floors. Glow Coat seals the pores and cracks against dust and dirt. Saves linoleum from scuffing and wear. Don't let another day go by without ordering Glow Coat. Spell G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T. Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat. And here's a tip. It's very economical to order the larger size. <laughs> You're out of that nightclub business, McGee. Yeah, but we, we, we'd have made a lot of dough. Say, did, did, did you see all the champagne them society gals were putting away? Yes, and I mm. hated to see it, too. Oh, I don't know. It was running into some nice figures. McGee. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax, Racine, Wisconsin, and inviting you all to join us again next Monday night at this same time. Until then, good night. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. WMAQ, the Chicago Daily News Station. <laughs>